Gemma Darling. Welcome to Gemma Darling Daily. This is season three, episode one, and I'm really excited to be starting season three, which is my third year doing this. Um, I only did it for half of 2017, and then I did all of 2018, or half of 2018, or all of 2018. I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, this is season three. Thank you for stopping in to check out my podcast. Um, I have been gone, and for those of you that don't know, I was gone for a reason. I felt really sick, um, and I thought it was really would have been in bad form to just get sick on camera. So I was like, all right, you need some time off to regroup and realize that you're growing a human. <laughs> so yay. <laughs> um, yes, we're expecting a daughter in July and I am so sick from this. Pregnancy kicks my ass. It totally does. And you know what? That's okay because my daughter is fantastic. And you know what? Nothing good ever comes in life without a little bit of sacrifice, right? So I get really big when I'm pregnant. So you guys are gonna watch me morph. And I'm gonna do this as often as I can. Um, I just, I don't know how much energy I'm gonna have. So right now I'm about four months, four and a half months. I don't really count, I don't care. I just know when the baby's ready to come out. <laughs> so follow along with me, you guys. Um, Again, I really appreciate you guys stopping in, and I pr I really appreciate all of the well wishes when you guys heard that I was pregnant, and when you found out that Mr. Pooper had gotten sick over the holidays, and we had to take him down for some emergency surgery down in South Jersey. We kind of missed our holiday. Um, and you know what? It was worth it, because he's a member of our family, and he needed back surgery. He was just... he. He just lip, leapt up a step in my mom's house and popped something in his back and his back legs weren't working. And um, we were actually at my husband's cousin's house and we were having a, a Christmas morning for the cousins on his side of the family on Christmas Eve morning. My mother called me right after we had opened all the presents and said, I cannot get his back legs to work. And I was like, what? So... Yeah, and it took a lot because no one works on Christmas Eve. And I understand doctors want their holidays. I get that. But you're a doctor. You don't always get your holidays. And I'm really sorry about that. But And I, and I do regard our pets as humans. So, yeah, veterinarians need to be open on the holidays. So Garden State Specialists um, was down, I believe it's in Tinton Falls, New Jersey, which is down by Red Bank, and we drove him right down there, and they had a team of specialists waiting for him on Christmas Eve. They didn't go home like they were supposed to. They waited so they could do a surgery on him and essentially save his legs. And so I am forever indebted. And to all of my friends, I'm just gonna flip my hair around the whole time because it's really uncomfortable today. Um, to all of my friends out there that have pets, especially if you have a doxy or an animal that's prone to something medical, like doxies are prone to having back pain and um, back paralysis, get the pet insurance. Get it. We have Figo, F-I-G-O, I think. Um, the surgery was about $7,500 all in. They gave us back $7,000. Yeah. I can't say that's going to happen for everyone. You know, that happened for us. It wasn't a pre-existing condition for him. I don't know what all the parameters are. All I know is... My dog stayed in the hospital for about five or six days and it cost us $500, which still a lot of money. That's nothing to blink at. But when you think about what it could have cost, and it's not like I was going to put him to sleep for a back injury because his demeanor was perfectly fine. Like, I wouldn't have. Like, I would have sold my house before I put that dog to sleep. So just a word to the wise, the little bit that we pay every month, if you can fit it into your budget, I know it is expensive, is worth it. Okay, guys, so thank you for all the well wishes. Um, while we were down in South Jersey, I got to visit Chelsea Yarns. Christina was a trooper in helping me emotionally get through what happened to my dog because she has some dogs and she knows what it's like. So she was wonderful. And so I took Franny and my husband to Chelsea Yarns one day. I said, I just need to mentally get out of what's happening. And, um, <laughs> and, you know, Miriam was there, one of the Chelsea Pearls, and her daughter, Mariah, who loves photography, did a whole fashion shoot with Franny, and Franny was, like, posing, and it was just such a great time. 
So Christina, again, thank you so much for having such a wonderful store that I can feel home in. It was, it was wonderful. So thank you. I should mention where you guys can find me if you're new subscribers, because I have noticed I have some new subscribers and I really appreciate you for stopping by. So um, I am Gemma Darlings with an S on Instagram and Gemma Darling on Ravelry. I'm not very active on Ravelry, so I won't respond to emails super quickly. I think I go on Ravelry probably once every two weeks. I use Rabbit, the app, so I don't really go on Ravelry. Um, that being said, you guys can DM me anytime you want. I get DMs from people a lot and I try to respond to everything. If I miss you, I'm so sorry. I, I really, really try, but you know, once in a while you gotta put down the phone mom life. So everyone's been drinking tea and coffee and all these great things lately. So, you know, I don't drink a lot of caffeine when I'm pregnant, but once in a while you just got to have a cup of tea. And <laughs> I really don't like decaf. If you try to slip me decaf, you will be my mortal enemy. I can taste it. It's disgusting. So I'm drinking my Scottish tea in my D mug. See, it's from Anthro and I love it. Yeah, that's not hot anymore. Okay. We'll microwave you later. Okay. Now, I haven't talked to you in a really, really long time. So, I have a lot to show you. And, um, yeah. I went to Vogue Knitting Live a couple weeks ago. And it was a love fest, guys. Everyone was so happy to see each other that they literally hug and kissed themselves into all having the flu when they got home. <laughs> I actually got around that because I had the sniffles from Franny a little bit when I got there, so it wasn't so bad, but um, yeah, a lot of my friends afterwards, I would text them and I didn't hear anything for days and it's, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm like on my deathbed. I'm like, okay, relax, this is not important. Um, so let me show you guys some stuff that's been going on. I'm not gonna get right into VKL, we're gonna do a little bit of stuff first. I've got all my notes, I got so much stuff to go through, so get your cup of tea and relax. Here we go. Okay, first off, I discovered Rabbit. And I don't know if you guys are on Ravelry, most knitters are, but Rabbit is an app, it's, I think it's about five bucks, it connects to your Ravelry account, and you can access all of your um, patterns and buy patterns and see your queue and your library and everything, and it's fantastic! And it's formatted for your iPhone, so you can take it all with you, and I love that. I absolutely love it. I have no idea if it's affiliated with Ravelry. Um, probably isn't, which is not a good thing, but it's fantastic. So I highly recommend Rabbit. Um, we haven't talked since November. So let's go into the advent that I got. And I'm gonna be going through stuff really, really fast. So if you need to stop and rewind it, go ahead. I'm gonna try and get out of here really fast because I don't want you guys to have to sit here for like two hours and watch me. So <laughs> let's get through everything really fast. Um, First off was my girl Brittany Petco, who is the dyer for Machete Shop Yarns. Um, this is their logo. It's actually a farm, you guys. She has she has chickens and she has um, a horse, and it's a farm, guys. So she dyes the most beautiful yarn. Look at this advent that I got. <gasps> I can't even. I can't. I mean, it just incredible yarn. She is speckle master flex, let me tell you, because her speckles are probably some of the best in the industry. Okay. Um, this is maybe a better example of it. She's just like, these are gorgeous. They're incredible. And so I received this package. They were all individually wrapped. They were numbered. And every day you opened one. And I think I got to the fifth day and then I just opened them all because I'm a yarn whore. So <laughs> these are amazing, Brittany. I'm so proud of you. You constantly kill it. I mean, just look at this blue. It's incredible. And they're all named after farm terms. Um, this one is, I can't read anymore. <laughs> this one is Country Fair Blue Ribbon. Um, let's see. Oh, this is one of my favorite ones. Look at this one. This one is called Jar of Honey. And I just, I love it. They're all labeled. Um, they are her sock base, which is incredible. And so she has stuff up on macheteshop.com. I think 
like at all times. Not a full store, but um, she also does pre-orders. So you can get sweater quantities from her and just correspond with her and she's fantastic. So guys, I highly recommend her. I've said her name before. Go for it. If you haven't bought a skein of Machete Shop, Gemma Darling approved. <laughs> okay, then she um, put in this one. This one's called Hummus. It's one of her bird's names. She has a chicken named Hummus. And it's this beautiful white with these uh, grays and gray speckles. And so you got all of the advents and you got one master skein. So I love it, Brittany, thank you. Uh, I got a lot of gifts, guys. Um, someone named Gina just started dyeing yarn and she sent me two skeins of her skein cocaine Cocaine, cocaine, and they are incredible. Very, very pretty, and I love them. I don't know what I'm gonna make. But she was gonna send me fingering, and she heard me say that I really don't use fingering so much, so she sent me worsted, and I love worsted. Guys, if you're a dyer, dye more worsted. It's like the most amazing weight to make a sweater out of. It's thick, it's quick, it's warm. And the stitch definition is really good, so it's one of my favorites right now. And then, I should wait till later, but at Vogue, she gave me this one. <gasps> so good. That hot pink. <laughs> Gina, I love it. I really do love them. This is her hot sock base. It's an 80-20, 437 yarn, yarn, to 113 grams. Who sells a skein of yarn that's 113 grams? Gina, you always have to be different? I don't even know how I'm gonna do the math for that. So thank you, Gina. I'm sorry I didn't get to cut your bangs. Uh, I was, thought I would try to keep our friendship intact. I cut mine though, and they look fantastic. I'm trying to hide the gray guys because I don't dye my hair when I'm pregnant. So that's why I'm wearing it straight. Hides it a little more instead of therafauceting. But we'll go back to that soon, I'm sure. I hate blow drying my hair. It breaks your hair. When I curl my hair, I have, I've washed it, slept on it, like, you know, blow dried a little, and then I sleep on it wet. And when I wake up, that's when I curl it. And so it hardly breaks it. Helps it look lustrous. It helps it look lustrous and luscious. Mm -hmm. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Uh, I was joking around with Lise from Trey Liz, um, and she I, she was making soaps, I think, for her family for the holidays, and I was like, oh, I want one! And I was kidding, but not kidding, <laughs> so she sent them to me. Um, oh, I love them. Look at them! Oh, they're so good! Guys, look at them. They're so pretty. Oh, this one has a hair on it. Okay. <laughs> and they came in this cute little box. See? And she had it wrapped with yarn. Just like crazily wrapped with yarn. I'm telling you, my reflexes, ever since I got pregnant, they are just shot. If you guys don't know Lise, she's from Trey Liz Colorway. Color is power. And she also, which I was not expecting, sent me two skeins of yarn. Oh, my legs are going dead. Oh, nothing is comfortable anymore. Okay, this one is called Do You Trust Me? Yes, Liz, I trust you. And this one is called Crocus, which you guys didn't know this, but I grew up with a whole like front lawn that used to just grow crocus and my sister and I would love picking them. So um, that reminds me of my childhood. And let me just tell you guys something about Lise. She's from Greece, and she has been coming to so many things. She came to Rhinebeck, and then she came to VKL. And so she came out to dinner with all of us. We had this big dinner um, at Tony's de Napoli, and I planned it, and I tried to order stuff, something for everyone. Um, and I ordered fettuccine Alfredo as one of the pastas, and I love fettuccine Alfredo. My body doesn't like it, but my head and my mouth really love it and um, I was just watching her pack it away I mean pack it away I've never seen someone inhale fettuccine alfredo like this before it was hysterical she was sitting next to Shamika and Shamika was just dying laughing like both of them had the best time <laughs> watching them eat was so much fun um 
I just, I love them both very, very, very much. And I'm so glad that Lisa has been coming to so many things, um, that I get to see her so much. And one day I would love to go to Greece to visit her because I just, Greek mythology used to be my thing. Like I wanted to be a Greek mythology professor when I was in high school, um, but I didn't like reading the tragedies. I liked reading the little, um, you know, like the Edith Hamilton mythology where they told you about each specific god. I loved reading that. Uh, once we got to like Oedipus and the Iliad and the Odyssey, those were really long. <laughs> I don't like to read that much in a row. So I kind of pooped out on that idea, but I think the Greek culture is fascinating. And so I do hope to visit one day. Um, I also really love the food. <laughs> so Lise, I'm going to come there and I'm going to eat like how you ate in New York City. I'm going to do that in Greece. So cool. As soon as I drop this kid, I'll be there. Seriously, guys, I have on my green shirt, obviously. It's from Gigi Made It. Let me show you. It says, when all else fails, knit. My pajama pants from Christmas. So I actually look like an elf right now. <laughs> and every time I wear these together, my daughter goes, you look like Santa mommy. And I'm like, yeah, mommy is Santa. Just letting you know, mommy is Santa. Um, I'm just a stream of consciousing today, sorry. Okay, should we go into whips? Let's do it, okay. Whips, you guys all know I have a fiber husband, right? His name is Corrado, well, um, Corrado Lark, as you know him, I know his real name. <laughs> um, he designs wonderful patterns, you guys, and I've been laying them out, so I get to read them before the masses get to read them, and they're very, very good. And for someone who hasn't been knitting for a very long time, he's mastered a lot of things that it takes knitters a very, very long time to master. So bravo to you, my yarn husband. I love you. Um, <laughs> this is his Darth FM pattern. Um, he made it in a red and black, which is why he thought it looked like Darth Maul. So he named it Darth Vader Maul, and then Vader sounds like Bader. So he said it is like Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So it's the Darth FM, which stands for Darth Vader Maul. I didn't follow it at first either, but when you see it on paper, it makes sense. Not really, but okay. So it's creative, it's creativity, guys. Anyway, Clinton Hill Cashmere, can we talk? <gasps> it's fantastic. And the thing that's making this cowl go so slow on my needles is that I'm very, very bad at doing a knit one pearl one. I'm just shitty at it, just shitty at it. So I wanted to tackle it anyway though, because I thought it was beautiful. It really makes this really cool texture, it does. So um, I've been working on this for a while. I put it down for a little while. You know, when something doesn't bring you joy for a second, as Marie Kondo says, just put it down. I don't throw things out ever. So we're going to pretend that she tells you to just put it aside. She does not, but that's what we're going to pretend. Um, so I put it aside for a little while. I'm going to pick it up again soon. I really do love the way it's coming out and I can't wait to wear it. It feels like butter because of the Clinton Hill cashmere and I just really love the pattern. So if you guys are good at doing a knit one pearl one, I highly suggest that pattern. Um, I also started a hat with this worsted from Nice and Knit. This, I believe this colorway is called Concord. I think it's in here somewhere. There are a lot of strings in here. Here we go. Um, it's from Nice and Knit. It's their worsted, which I've never worked with. It's knitting up like butter. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend, you know, what? you know, I love the ladies from Nice and Knit. Kara and Katie, they're two sisters. They're wonderful people. I love supporting them. I actually missed their booth at Vogue because I just didn't feel very well. And so I kind of hit things and then I missed a lot and I'm very sorry I did. But um, I would like to attend one of their knit nights up in Connecticut whenever I'm able to. They do it at this place called Luann's Bakery. And they, I think it's owned by either one of their relatives, their aunt, I think. And you pay to go and it's, um, you get like a pastry and a drink and for the admission price. And you sit and knit for two or three hours. And so I would love to do that. And that is on my bucket list. Um, but look how this is knitting up. I mean, they do gorgeous, gorgeous dyeing. Again, this is their Concord colorway on worsted. And I just was knitting some random slouchy hat. <laughs> so I'm going to finish that up soon because I actually don't have a hat 
to wear around outside in the winter, which is really stupid because I'm a knitter. I'm a dumb knitter who doesn't knit the things that she needs. So, um, with that being said, I think I should finish that hat. Okay, so I made a hat. It was a Pearl Soho hat. Um, Pearl Soho has a lot of free patterns online if you go to pearlsoho.com. And I had been at Chelsea Yarns, let me show you, when Pooper was sick. And so I bought a lot of the Chelsea Lux in Chunky. I really wanted her red carpet colorway. Red is one of my very favorite colors, but only if it's a blood red, a blue red, not a tomato red, not a tomato girl, mm -mm, no. But I love the dark, dark blood reds. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I actually bought four skeins and my husband picked the one that he wanted and made me, made me, <laughs> made me knit him a hat. I used the Pearl Soho, um, what's it called? Pearl Soho soft merino hat or something like that. I don't remember. There's a lot of patterns on there. It was a basic one. It came in every size. You could be a newborn or an old man and there is a hat size for you. And so he picked the skein he wanted and I made it and it didn't fit because I used half, a, I used, instead of using 11s, I used a 10 and a half needle. He's like, oh, it's tight. I said, okay, well, I'll take that one and I'll just make you another one because I have all these other skeins. And he goes, no, I want this skein. He made me frog it. I mean, granted, I knit it in a day, but still, I would have worn it. Anyway, yeah. But I also bought this. I believe this colorway is ballet slippers. And I'm going to make my hat out of this. Even though most of my stuff is red, I should use the red, but I have three skeins of the red left. I am going to make this out of them. The Cozy Cable Cowl. It is a Pearl Soho um, pattern. It was free. I think it's gorgeous. And I'm going to get to my knit ears resolutions where I feel that I need to embrace cables. Guys, there are so many things. Like I tried to knit that Caitlin Hunter hat that everyone is knitting. Um, which of course the name has just the Kobuk there, the Kobuk hat. And I, it was like, I just, I, I couldn't do the one cable thing that I needed to do. Like I could do it, but it annoyed me because I was so slow and I love the hat. I need to embrace cables guys. Someone help me. Okay. Someone help me. I also bought this. I don't know when I bought this though. I don't think I bought this then. I think I bought this a while ago. Anyway, it's adorable, isn't it? Look, alpaca butt. Never anything wrong with alpaca butt. I only have one more whip to show you. Um, and I love this. So let me start out by saying I cast this, this shawl on the day before the shit hit the fan with a, an indie yarn dyer uh, telling how she felt about the conversation. I'm not gonna talk about who she is if you don't know, it's I'm not my place to tell you. Um, I didn't like what she was saying. I thought it was really insensitive and inhumane. And um, a lot of the things that she linked, I didn't like. All right, so I didn't like it. So I took her yarn, chucked it. And I had just started this shawl in it. And I threw the whole shawl in the garbage. <laughs> I was like, no, there's no room for this in the knitting community. And I am not going to knit with it. So a lot of people were saying I should donate it. I was like, I have yarn dyed with love. I don't need yarn dyed with hate. So that's just how I feel about certain things. And so I, we have to act on how we feel, right? If you think something wrong is going on, act. And that was how I chose to act. So I cast it on again with my trusty old glazed pecan from Madeline Tosh. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I got this at Chelsea Yarns because that's one of my happy places. And I cast on this shawl, which I want to show you the pattern before I show you, but of course I can't find things because it's who I am. Oh, here it is. So this is called the Akimi shawl. I believe I'm saying it right. I probably am not. Um, it's the Akimi shawl by the one, the only. Isabel Kramer, 
who my friends accosted when we were in EYF, and I think we scared her. So, <laughs> sorry, Isabel. Um, Leslie loves you, and I think she would have tried to kidnap you if we hadn't stopped her. So, <laughs> that was one of the funniest parts of my EYF videos. If you guys haven't watched my EYF videos, please find them. There are three. Um, there was traveling in day one, one for day two, and then day three and traveling home and watch them. They are so funny. I just watched them over again and I just, that trip was so epic. The ladies that I was with, the experiences we had. Um, I'm looking forward to going back to Edinburgh in 2020. I'm not going this year, but um, I have to have another C-section. So we'll see how that goes. And if I'm well enough to go in 2020, that is my goal. So to all that are going this year, I'm going to try and, and, and give you some tips in my next podcast, things not to miss, things I missed and I wish I had seen. So I'll try to put together a list of things to hit. Um, a couple people asked me to do that, and so I'll try. I will give you one tip. If you're going to EYF, find the black phones, okay? When we first got there, we had no idea how to call a cab. We were just trying to flag them down like we were in New York City. No. Most hotels and venues have a black phone. You pick up the black phone, you tell them, they know where you are already just from being connected. And then they come and they call your name and that is your cap. Fantastic. I wish they did it in New York City. Anyway, guys, let's go back to this. This is the Akini Shawl by Isabel Kramer. And I absolutely am loving this. So, of course, I made myself a chart, which I'm not going to be able to find now. Of course, this is this notebook comes around the whole house with me. See the chart? This is my chart so that I don't miss any rows. So I don't, um, you know, I have all of the, the numbers of how many stitches each row should end up. I count them a million times. This is why I'm a slow knitter, but hey. Um, and I make these charts that are pretty pretty freaking epic. So if you decide that you want to knit this shawl, um, once I show it to you, let me know. I can easily send this to you so you guys can follow along. This is the shawl so far. I'm almost through the, um, I don't know what you would call it, a stockinette or a garter section. Um, it's really knitting up pretty. I really like it. Um, I don't usually use fingering weight because it's so thin. So this is going to be a nice spring shawl. Um, I think I want to finish this for the Andrea Maori Christie Glass event that um, India Untangled is sponsoring. And that is going to be at Murmur in Brooklyn on March 30th. And so if I'm feeling well, I am working that event. So if you guys haven't gotten tickets yet, um, I'm trying to think, Ticketfly, I think it was called. Yes, ticketfly.com still has tickets, I believe. I haven't checked. It's $25. Um, doors open at 6.30. I believe the event starts at 7. I'm not exactly sure about that. Um, it's in Brooklyn by the Brooklyn Museum, which is an amazing venue. So go to the Brooklyn Museum during the day. Eat there. There. Oh, my gosh. The Norm is, the inc is an incredible restaurant. When I went to see the Bowie exhibit there, all the food was Bowie themed. I was in heaven. My husband and I had a great time. Um, there were Bowie pictures everywhere and it was just amazing. And I don't know what exhibit they have going on right now, but just the architecture inside the museum is amazing. So hit the, hit the art museum and then come see Andrea Mowry, um, who did catch the flu at VKL. And I'm so sorry she hasn't been feeling well, but I think she bounced back pretty well. Let's hope. I hope you're feeling better, Andrea. Um, so... Again, this is the Akimi shawl. And if you guys want any of the calculations, let me know. So that's what I have so far. And I'm just so happy that I'm going to have a garment in glazed pecan. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, it's not even my favorite color. Like I really just, I just love that colorway. My favorite colors tend to be like, these deep berry, moody berries, and um, oh my gosh, I'm gonna show you my haul from Vogue, but this neighborhood fiber company color. <gasps> I don't even know what to turn this into, and I got three skeins of it, and I am dying to use it. Dying, dying. I love neighborhood fiber company. I got my first at Rhinebeck a couple of years ago, and I just, it's good. Um, they're, well, we'll talk about them in a second, but it's just that their berries and reds are dyed so well. 
And a lot of um, berries and reds that a lot of other dyers are, they're a little flat. It's, it's hard to get a really vibrant red, I'm guessing, when you're dyeing. And so that's one of the reasons I love the Chelsea Yarns red carpet, because it's just so vibrant. And I love a good blue red and a blue pink. I love it. Let's see. Oh, we are actually at the section for the VKL recap and haul. So let's see, is this even hot anymore? Mm -mm. That's gross. Okay, why don't we do the Brio Duo of the week before we do our VKL stuff. So in our ball jar of fun, <laughs> here is the Brio Duo of the week. Can you tell I haven't been out of the house in a while? Okay, so um, a couple months ago, uh, I grabbed Gigi and Nick Witch and we ventured into the city for the Loop London pop-ups shop at the, um, the Mayak space downtown. And so it was, I think I talked about it on my last podcast, it was disappointingly wiped out. I really am dying to go to Loop London. I am going to try to talk Christy into flying into Edinburgh next year and then flying back out of London so that we can spend a day in London because I've never been there and which is so weird because most of the music I listen to is British invasion music so I um I just think it's weird that I've never been there but hey so I bought these two skeins of um Qing fiber and I just I, I mean like they are an unconventional brio duo people but open your mind okay so it's Ching Fiber, and this is their Merino single. This is a Flamingo. Look at that. It's, it's like neon pink. It like, like my 12 year old self would love that skein. And then this one, which is called Biscuit, which is one of the most beautiful golds I have ever seen. Do you see this, Vanessa? Do you see it? We need to find sweater quantities of this. Uh-huh. And so, I don't know, guys. I just thought that that would be such a good Brio duo. I mean, there are bits of gold in the pink, but uh, I don't know. I just thought, we think of a Brio duo as two shades of the same color, like a real light and a real dark, right? But no, no. I think this would be cool brioche together, so. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but that is your Brio Duo of the week. Back in the ball jar. I love this thing. It was $15 at Target. What, it makes me happy. It brings me joy. <laughs> I hope it brings you joy also. Okay guys, it's time for the VKL. The VKL. Um, okay, so. My wonderful husband and I take allowances, and you may have heard me mention this before. Um, we budget them. We put them into our budget. And if there's a month where we have an expense for some reason, we don't take them, but we put them into our budget because then we don't have to worry about going over budget that month. Um, we each have money for going out with our friends and doing things that have to do with our hobbies, and we can collect our uh, allowances, you know, in our own bank accounts. And if he wants to buy a computer or a car or whatever he wants to buy, or if I want to go and blow it all on yarn, no one asks any questions. And I have to say, I know my parents took allowances also. I don't know if they did it the same way, but it's just, you know, no questions asked. He says, I'm going to do this and I'm going to use my allowance money. And I said, go for it. That's your money, right? So, you know, if his computer dies or he wants to go on a trip or I want to go on a trip with my girls, like we have money set aside and we're very, very lucky to be able to do that. And we think it's saving our marriage. So, um, I always spend mine on yarn, so I don't have much banked, but he does. And so I said, I wanted to go to VKL. The first trimester of this pregnancy made me so sick. I was just nauseous all the time debilitatingly nauseous. And um, so I said to him, I really want to get a hotel room at the hotel because I can't just go there on the train, stay 10 hours and come home like I usually do. I just can't make it. And so he 
being the loving, amazing person that he is, who I'd like to drop him into a clone machine because I could sell him and he would be amazing. Um, that's how great he is. Sincerely, guys. Ask me again in 25 years, but I'll, I'm pretty sure I'll still say the same thing. He's fantastic. 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 Um, he used his allowance money and got me a room. Yeah, that's my husband. Amazing and selfless. And so luckily I had a room. So I pick up Gigi and she's like, bring me to the drugstore. Let's go here. So we go and get snacks. And my husband is just driving us. He's like our chauffeur. He drove me in. Usually I take public transportation, guys. I have no problem going in and out of the city. It's like my second home. You know, I lived there for a long time. He didn't want me on public transportation because he was worried about me. Wonderful. He's wonderful. I'm very, very lucky. So um, we pick up Gigi, <laughs> we get our snacks, and then we head to the city and he drops us off literally in the port cocher of the Marriott Marquis. I pull out my big wagon which I usually take Franny to the pool in in the summer. I love this thing, it's like a Best Buy on Amazon. Um, and I fill it and Gigi and I throw our crap in it and we go into the hotel and she will not let me pull it. My yarn mama would not let me pull it because she didn't want me lifting heavy things because of the baby. And Gigi, these are one of the, it's just one of the many reasons that I love you madly. I love you madly. So thank you for caring about me enough to haul my crap through a crowded hotel. <laughs> um, yeah, that was fun. So we get upstairs and I'm waiting to get the room and the room is not ready. And so we go and eat and they give you like a $35 a day voucher, which is pretty good. I mean, they, like they, they build it into your room price, blah. but still go eat. Okay. They have great restaurants in the Marriott Marquis. You guys, if you're coming from another state, I don't know exactly what the normal pricing is. Um, I know that if you get a room and you sign up with v for the tickets of VKL, initially, if you can get a room, because they only have a certain amount, it's $250 a night. That's without taxes and fees, which is really good because mine was way more than that. But I had Miriam from the Chelsea Pearl stayed with me one night. Um, Nicole Mork from Mork Made Fiber Company stayed with me two nights. Christy did her interviews in my room and everyone so happily chep, chep, bleh, chipped in to help me pay for this room. And so I consider that you guys helping me take care of myself because I really needed the room. I did go in the, let's see, on Friday I took a nap. Saturday in the middle of the day I took a nap. Unfortunately, it was when my mother came to meet me and she had to go around alone because I just did not feel well. And, um, but I took a, a long nap and I, and I was just revived and then I could keep going. And so, honey, thank you so much for getting that room for me. It was a life changer. I would not have been able to enjoy this event without that room. And so I really, really do uh, appreciate it. But Friday when Gigi and I got there, we met Adela from, um, Lola Bean and I, I can't even tell you, like I had been told that this woman is amazing and that I would fall in love with her like that. I fell in love with her like that. She's hysterical. If you don't follow, I believe it's Lola Bean. It's either Fiber Company or Yarn Company. Uh, I'll put it down in the down bar here. Follow her. She is fantastic. Her kid is adorable. Like I can't even take it. She is so freaking cute. I just want to squeeze her. So anyway, um, I loved meeting her and I finally met up with Miriam and Christina and their crew from Chelsea Yarns and I could see Miriam was just like, when is the room going to be ready? When is the room going to be ready? Because the marketplace was opening at five o'clock and she had to get to Shelly Can. <laughs> like she had to get there. And um, so I said to her, like, give me your stuff. Like go to Shelly Can. Like it's fine. She's like, no, no, it's okay. So we got into the room, like just at the skin of our teeth, like just at five o'clock and she ran down to go get her stuff. And then everyone, like Gigi and her daughter and everyone came and put their coats in my room. And guys, I don't care. It was just so much fun. It was so much fun. Um, and then Friday night, we all went out to dinner at um, Tony's in Napoli. There were 20 of us. Um, you know, my hometown, my home team girls, Leslie and Liz and Creative Sissi and Espas Tricot and Gigi and Shamika and Liz and Christy. And I'm missing people. Um, Stephanie from Asylum Fibers and two amazing women that work in her booth with her. And then um, 
Cece's friends from Denver were with us, and we just had, and Polly, Leslie's sister-in-law. And these are just people I see all the time, and they've become our family, and so we went and had a family-style meal, and it was amazing, and wow, the amount of leftovers. That was incredible. So, Tony's in Napoli, guys. Great buy. That was Friday. Um, Saturday, I did all my shopping, and I'm going to show you what I got. So... I've been trying to shop with intention. Um, it's not easy. I remember Christy did it at EYF. She had all these patterns ready. She kept trying to look at her phone, get all the yardages that, that the yardage that she needed. And I was just like, I like this, and I like this, and I like this. And I ended up destashing most of it because what are you gonna do with one skein of this and that? Like, I don't make that many hats. And who makes a hat out of fingering weight? Like, very rarely do I make a hat out of fingering weight. So. I shopped with intention. Now, it doesn't mean that I bought everything with intention. I knew that I had to go to conversational threads because, A, it's the home store to Lavanya Patricella, who is one of my very, very favorite people in the entire industry. She is just gorgeous inside and out. And um, I wanted to go to this store, but I haven't made it out to Pennsylvania yet. So I knew they had Olan, which is my like one of my very favorite brands. It's a very new dyer. Um, <sighs> Jessica Cavanaugh, Jess Cavanaugh from Ireland. And uh, guys, I put the same colorway that I already have. But this is in the sock yarn. And wasn't I just destashing sock yarn? Yeah. Well, they didn't have any singles and I love these skeins. I think they're absolutely breathtaking. And so I bought them. And this is the Chimera colorway. So I'm thinking that a shawl has to happen. Um, or I'm just going to keep these skeins as skeins because they bring me joy. Then I bought these because my girl Vanessa Reyes, Forste, I believe Forste is her married name. Let's just call her Vanessa. Um, she is getting me into gold. And I love golds, because gold goes with black clothes, it goes with white clothes, it goes with white clothes, who wears white clothes? It goes with brown, see I'm very, very particular about if I wear brown with black, brown doesn't go with black, brown goes with blue, blue goes with gray, gray goes with black, like I'm very particular about how I dress. And this goes with it all. And so I'm starting to get really, really into the golds. And I thought this was exquisite. And this colorway is called Corduroy. And if I'm not mistaken, Corduroy was a bear in a children's, in children's literature. I could totally be mistaken about that. Um, but I love it. And it's sock yarn, guys. I may hold it double for something. I don't know. But this is really all I bought without intention. Um, the first place I stopped was Asylum Fibers because Stephanie is one of my very close fiber friends. I think she's an incredible dyer. I wanted to see her booth because I'd been hearing about it for a while. And I also wanted to pick up this pin that she collaborated on with Shamika Clark. And Shamika designed this. She is a recent grad in the field of graphic design. And it says embrace your crazy and I think it's beautiful and I love it because it's got pink sparkles there it is so if you haven't gotten this inquire with Stephanie I'm not even sure if she has any left but so I really love her brainless base it's a brainless bulky and she names everything like as if you were in an asylum She's a little creepy because she likes blood splatters and things, but she's really a very, very nice down-to-earth person. Um, she just has, like, a, you know, she likes blood. All right. It's a cool logo, though, right? It's cool. It's different. It's very different from anything else in the community. Um, this color is called Don't Envy You, and it's a beautiful green. I thought it was exquisite. And I am going to be an auntie any day now. My sister is pregnant, which is so wonderful to me because it was unexpected, but such a wonderful, wonderful gift to our family. And so um, I'm going to be an auntie to a nephew. She's having a boy and I'm like no one has any idea what she's naming this kid. I don't even think she knows. So that has been a joke <laughs> in my family for the past six months. Um, when she told me she was pregnant, I thought she was kidding. <laughs> so that was a fun night. 
but I want to make him something in green because her husband likes blue and he wants everything to be blue. And she's like, no, I like green. She has literally liked green since she was a little girl. And, um, little girls don't usually like green. So it was funny. I used to be like, you were supposed to like pink and purple like me. And she was like, no, I like green and orange. And she stuck by it. And I, I really like red. So pink and purple have kind of fallen by the wayside. I like my dark pinks though. Anyway, I love this, Stephanie. Thank you. Uh, your dyeing is really, really good. It's good and it's unique. And I love how you have a whole rainbow of colors in jewel tones. A lot of um, dyers don't have jewel tones. And so I love that. So I'm gonna make something for my nephew. Guys, I haven't have a nephew. I'm so excited. Hi, um, Magpie. Do you guys know Magpie Fibers? Damie Hunter from Magpie Fibers is an incredible soul. She is someone I love to visit at fiber festivals. She's down to earth, no bullshit. She is just fantastic. She's kind of who I want to be when I grow up. Um, but she's not that much older than me. So she has a lot of yarns that have cashmere in them. So a lot of, you know, you go to, to sock, you go get sock yarn. Um, at a lot of places and it's just merino and nylon, right? Hers are MCN. She also has an MCN DK, which is called Swanky DK. Sing. Swanky. This is called Selky, this colorway. It's like this really, really flat gray. And I'm interviewing this yarn to become my Rhinebeck sweater. Now I think I'm gonna definitely use her yarn. I haven't decided on a colorway yet because I may wanna make it in more of a gold. But this is the Portage or Portage cardigan. Um, I'm just gonna put the name. That is the name of the designer. I cannot say it. I would rather not butcher it. I can't do it. So, uh, Skashwari, I think. Anyway, I've wanted to make this for a really long time. It's a cardigan that has pockets. So the way that you knit it, you fold them up and sew it and you have pockets and guys, pockets. I mean, come on. I tried to make my um, seamstress put pockets in my wedding dress and she was like, no, it's too thin. The material, it's too thin. I had a Swiss dot in a chiffon and a silk, I don't know, a silk chiffon or something. And she was like, I can't. And I was like, but every wedding dress should have pockets. Cell phone, lipstick, you're good. So she couldn't do it. So my Rhinebeck sweaters from now on will all have pockets. This is the back. It's a honeycomb kind of pattern. Um, I think I'm gonna have to do some cabling for that, which is another reason I'm going to embrace the cable this year. This is the year of embrace the cable. So again, that's the portage. This is going to be my Rhinebeck sweater this year, guys, and I am going to make it do or die. And that is what I'm interviewing for it. Um, ugh, please excuse me. So I've been trying to figure out what to make a sipola out of. I want to make a short sleeve sipola. And I had chosen this yarn from Murky Depths. I believe it's called Lucia. And as you guys know, I love these dark, moody, purplish berry tones. But it's a very thin single. And I finally found the contrasting color for it. This is Heart of Glass by Magpie Fibers on their singles base. Um, it's called Solo Fingering. And their Solo Fingering is 100% superwash, but it is 434 yards to 115 grams. So it's a little bit thicker than the Murky Depths. And I said, you know what? I said, I love the Murky Depths. I'll make it. I have two skeins of this. I'll make it into something else. I need to use this because it took me so long to find the contrasting color for all the color work. And um, I really love it. Look at all the colors in it. So much. So good. And so I just said, you know what? Why don't I go back over to Magpie? Because then I'll get the exact same base and a, in a color that I feel goes with it. And so guys, this is going to be my Sipola. Shocker. It's a berry tone. Shocker. So this is called Soiree, and I'm going to try to tackle that at some point. I'm glad that I have it all ready to go. Um, I think I have enough because a lot of people were telling me that they use two skeins of fingering, which is normally about 800 yards, you know, 400 each. This one is 434, so I'm hoping I have enough. And if not, I'm just going to continue the pattern with the, whatever left over this at the bottom, and that'll be it. So I'm excited to start a short sleeve slipola with this. Um, 
I also wanted to make this Felix pullover. This, you know why I have all these? Because of rabbit, guys. So I wanted to make this Felix pullover. And uh, it's a really pretty simple pattern, but if you can see over by the shoulders, it has a little bit of um, a little detail about right here on the shoulders, like right there. And um, I need something that I can just mindlessly toss on over a dress while I'm a prego beast. And I, I thought this was a really good one. Maybe you can see it better in these pictures here. They're not that great, the pictures. I didn't put my... I don't put my printer on high, um, you know, high quality output when I'm printing patterns, but I probably should. Anyway, it's the Felix Pullover. It's by Savoy Knitting, Savory Knitting, Savory, sorry, can't read, don't have my glasses on. Um, and I knew exactly what I wanted for it. And I wanted a sweater quantity of La Bien Ami Aaron in rust. And I got it. They had it. Guys, they had it. They had a yarn that I wanted in a sweater quantity. Like, ha! Huh? Like, seriously. Like, when does that ever happen? It does not happen. So I was going to have my friend Marla, who is my Paris hookup, get this for me at La Bien Ami, but uh, she didn't have to, and she's on a safari right now, so she can't. So, um, I'm just really excited, and Amy gave me a pin that is downstairs in my purse, which I was very, very thankful for. We, we all had lunch together on the first day we were there. It was like a four o'clock snack, you know? Um, and she just sat with us and um, Catherine from Brooklyn General sat with us, who she really likes French fries, guys. She really likes them, so, <laughs> so do I. Um, and so I went over and I headed over and I got this from her shop and I got it and I got a pin I got a pin from her of Brooklyn General. I really like their logo. It's very retro. Um, I really haven't, I haven't gotten to that store yet, guys. Like, spank me. It's ridiculous. That store, I think I would spend my mortgage in it. It's got, like, all the crafts. All the If I were to ever open a store, like, it would be, like, a crafting general store. It's brilliant. I mean, I, I just, I can't. My mind will just be blown. It just will be blown. Like, like it was blown when I found a sweater quantity of what I wanted. Guys, I'm very excited to start this one. It's gonna go very fast. Um, in my head, I want this shawl and this sweater for the Andrea Maury event in Brooklyn at the end of March. They don't go together, so I'm not gonna kill myself. I wanna try to finish this, because I think if I abandon it, it will never get done. I'm almost at the lace section. I actually really like knitting lace, so that's good. Um, and then you do a little bit more garter, and then you do another big lace panel, and then there's some, like, I believe there's some baubles at the end. Like, it's a really great pattern. So uh, there's one more thing I think I got at Vogue. I'm just trying to make sure I hit everything, and I wanted to hit the knitting place because Dinah is such a wonderful person in this knitting community. I can't even tell you. I met her at EYF um, and Christy did an appearance there last year and I drove all the way to Long Island because I wanted to go to her store and she and Pam are just beautiful souls. They're fantastic. They're fun. They're nice. They have great customer service and a great selection. So if you guys are ever on Long Island, or even if you're not, hop on the Long Island Railroad and get to the knitting place. And they're in Port Washington. This is their logo. It's really cute. It's like a house with the knitting needles on top. And so I got to her booth and some woman, I believe her name was Bethany, came up to me and wanted to tell me a story of something that happened the year before at VKL. So she and I got to talking and then I was talking to her mom. Her, she and her mom made these gorgeous cipolas. I was actually following her mom through the marketplace on the fifth floor before we got to the sixth. She made it in this gorgeous deep turquoise with like a grayish rainbowed um, color as the contrast. And I, I, it was just exquisite. Um, anyway, that was a tangent. I wanted to make a getting warmer cowl for my stepmother-in-law for Christmas and I didn't get to. I should say for Hanukkah. She and I are both Jewish. <laughs> we end up, you know, it's like Christmas season. So you, sometimes you get lost in it. But no, it was for Hanukkah and I and I dropped the ball this year because I didn't feel well and then we had, you know, Pooper's little escapade. Um, and so also this, which is Wolfolk Luft, 
um, this colorway, and let me see what, it's the L6 colorway. I think it was originally made in this colorway by Melissa of Espace Tricot, who designed it. It's a free pattern on EspaceTricot.com or on Ravelry. Um, it is one of my favorite things that I've ever knit. It's like a funnel and it comes down across your shoulders and I wear it around the house. I wear it at EYF. You wear it over all of your clothes if you're just cold. It really does make you warmer. So I wanted to make her one um, and this was just sold out everywhere around the holidays. And it's such an economical, really wonderful yarn. Um, and so I went and I picked it up and I tried to pay Dinah and she wouldn't let me. Guys, Dinah is such a good person. She is so nice and I love her more than life. And I just thank you so much for the gift, Dinah. You sent me a gift like three months ago. Like stop giving me gifts. Let me put some money into your business, please. Um, and I really love it. It's super soft. And so I'm going to start that soon because this is a good knit if you're going to a knit night or if you have a knitting circle, um, because it's not a difficult pattern to follow at all. And it knits up super fast. So it's one of those accessories that you're going to knit and you're really going to use. So again, this is Wool Folk Luft in the L6 colorway from the knitting place. Um, I believe she sells it online. I'm not sure. Um, and I'm going to make the Getting Warmer Cowl by Espace Tricot. Okay, guys, I think that's all. I think that's all from Vogue. And, um, like, that's not a lot or something. So I wanted to go into my Knit Year's resolutions, and then I'm going to go into one other craft that I've started, and then I will let you go because you've been watching me babble for God knows how long I've been letting this run. Um, my Knit Year's resolutions, I was going to share them with you in January. Guess what? Didn't podcast in January. Yeah. Um, I want to learn to increase and decrease in brioche. I am dying to make this Andrea Mowry shawl. I don't know how to do increases and decreases. I probably just have to start the shawl and then learn as I go. Or I should just take a brioche class. That makes sense too. So I'm, that's one thing that I want to do. I only want to buy yarn with intention. Um, I tried. Guys, I tried. There was one pattern that I did not buy yarn for because, I mean, who needs three sweater quantities, right? So this is the Toulouse pullover. And I just, I got the pattern because I think it's beautiful. And I love like that 80s drapiness, but I kind of think this needs to be made in Clinton Hill cashmere, guys. And I don't know if mama can afford a sweater quantity of that anytime soon. Um, if anyone wants to send me gifts for the baby, send me money for Clinton Hill cashmere. Because if mommy, happy mommy, happy baby. Yes. Um, just kidding. Maybe. Um, so I'm going to try to only buy yarn with intention. I did, for the most part, buy yarn with intention. I bought my Cipolla yarn. I bought yarn to interview for my portage. I have my, um, whatever this was called, the Felix pullover. Did I show you my neighborhood fiber company? I didn't. Guys, one of my favorite, favorite brands is Neighborhood Fiber Company. They are in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and I just, again, I think I did say this. I love their reds and their pinks and their saturated jewel tones. And so I bought three skeins of this. Mm, I did not buy this with intention, but it's called Charles Village. I believe that they name things after areas of Baltimore. Baltimore, I've never been there, but it's very near and dear to my heart because that is where Edgar Allan Poe met his decline. And I am a huge, huge Edgar Allan Poe fan. Love it. The Cask of Amontillado, the Fall of the House of Usher, the Telltale Heart. They, they're creepy. They're creepy. They're good. And so I love reading his stories like before you go to bed, creep yourself out. Um, there's also a lot of stuff to visit in New York City. He lived in the city for a while. So I believe you can visit his house. I haven't done it, but I may have to do that in the spring. Um, I also bought this. It's called Ramblewood. I don't need it for anything, but I thought it was beautiful. Um, it's got a lot of like, it's a very, very chocolatey brown. And it's got a lot of reds and grays in it. Can you see that? So I just hope that you guys will patronize Neighborhood Fiber Company. I couldn't love them anymore. 
I, I really, I, I gravitate towards their booth quite often whenever I'm at a fiber festival. Um, they, Backyard Fiberworks, who wasn't at Vogue, and um, whoever is selling Olan and Magpie, tend to be where I go. But um, guys, this is beautiful. So that was Vogue, guys. And I decided to take a sewing class at Urban Society. I think I, um, I put Franny in a store-bought Halloween costume this year and my grandmother rolled over in her grave. So I said to myself, I have this amazing sewing machine. I got it on overstock.com. It wasn't super expensive. It's a Singer Heavy Duty. It's gray. I do not like white sewing machines. Do not ask me why. I do not like them. So I got a gray sewing machine. And I love it. I love the way it works. Um, it doesn't have, it's not too newfangled, you know, it doesn't have too many options on it, but I think that's good for a beginning sewist because you really have to concentrate on stupid things like sewing in straight lines. So um, I signed up at Urban Society, which is in Westfield, New Jersey. Um, one of my friends, Meg, is an owner there and I'm making the making backpack. Um, so this backpack is featured in Making Magazine, which if you guys do not know, is a small publication, I believe, I don't know if it comes out quarterly, um, this is number five, it's called Color, and the backpack is in here. They have all sorts of things in here. Um, they have rug hooking, they have, um, a, a drop cloth needle case, look at this. They have all sorts of things in here. There's cooking, there's knitting, there's sewing, um, there's um, embroidery, there's gardening, there's a drink. Guys, it's a great, great little thing. Look, there's even um, some weaving. And so I've been trying to collect them and I'll look through it. If I'm not interested in what any of the projects, I won't buy that issue, but this is number five and this has the making backpack. And again, this is what it looks like. And so I thought it was a little ambitious because I've only made some crappy project bags, but um, I am actually not doing super bad. I mean, I wouldn't give this away or sell it because I kind of suck, but we had the, the classes in two parts. It was three hours each. So I did one last Saturday. I'm doing one this Saturday and this is my beginning. This is the front of my bag. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, I'm a really awful sewist. <laughs> Um, and I'm using waxed canvas and I love it. But as you're sewing, your hands are covered in wax. And um, this is my inside fabric. Let's see. My legs are going dead. Let's see, let's see. This is my inside fabric. And it's very hard to find nice fabric. I don't like to order a, a lot on the internet because I can't see it first and I don't want to be disappointed because once they cut it, it's yours. But um, I went to Joanne Fabrics and I really don't like to go to big box stores, but I liked this. Felt it was moody, you know, it was good. Went with the gray. And so that was the front of mine. And then guys, I sewed a zipper, look. It's really messed up and totally crooked, but <gasps> It works! And I'm really excited about it. <laughs> so um, that is that. I also have some of a, a really cool like yellow that I'm gonna try next when I try to make another one for myself. And once I master it, I'm buying some orange wax canvas. And guess who I'm gonna make that for? But you may be waiting for a while, Gigi, because I'm not a good sewist at all. And since I'm growing a human, I tend to sleep a lot. So guys, if you are interested in the making backpack, you can order it on noodle-head.com. Um, you can order this, which is a just a copy of the um, pattern. And you can also order these kits um, for, this was about $18.50, I believe, which is really good because if you go to Joanne and try to get all these pieces, it's gonna cost you a lot more. So it comes with the zippers that you need, the internal zipper and the outer zipper. It comes with um, the webbing that you need for the straps and the backpack straps. And it comes with the hardware that you need to make the backpack adjustable. And it comes with the leather strip that goes in the middle of the two straps on the front of the bag. So I just thought I would impart that knowledge because I ordered this 
on Thursday and my class was on Saturday. And so I had to find all these things somewhere else and then it came on Monday. <laughs> so um, if you're gonna make the making backpack, which I highly recommend if you're an advanced beginner sewist, um, I know that my friend Emily, who is Slow Fashion Rebel on Instagram, she also has the Slow Fashion Rebel podcast on YouTube, which I love because I just like her manner of speaking. Um, she teaches a class at Brooklyn General. No, nope, Brooklyn Craft Company. And so if you guys are looking to make this and you're across two rivers from me, please look that up and see when her next class is because she's a phenomenal sewing teacher. She's a fantastic, fantastic person. I hung out with her like once and we were in love. Um, she's actually going to help me with garment sewing this summer. And so I just wanted you guys to know that if you're not in the New Jersey area and you would like to take a class on the making backpack, um, you can't get to Urban Society, but you're in Brooklyn, contact Emily, Slow Fashion Rebel. I think that she'll be running another class soon. Okay, guys, so that seems to be it. Um, I am sitting here in a big pile of fiber and I just wanna go heat up my tea and curl up in my Santa pants. <laughs> and watch Marvel's Runaways, or did anyone see a discovery of witches? Oh my God. It's like Twilight, like times a hundred. It's like so good. I think that Vool and Vine talked about it on her podcast a long time ago because she read the books. So I bought the books, but if you guys like, just do the trial subscription to whatever they want you to try. Like I found it on Amazon Prime. They wanted me to subscribe to something in order to watch it. And I was like, okay, no problem. And then, um, so I did. Guys, I watched it in two days. I watched seven episodes in one day, and then I watched one episode the next day. There's only eight episodes, which is upsetting. But Matthew Good, guys, I love him. I love him. So he's in it, and you will not be disappointed. I'm also watching Marvel's Runaways. Uh, anyone else watching The Curse of Oak Island? Guys, they're actually finding stuff. Like, it was a joke. My husband and I sit with each other every Tuesday night and just say, they didn't find anything. They didn't find anything. They didn't find anything. Guys, they're finding stuff. In fact, I'm going to go down there right now and watch that with my husband. I'm going to heat up my tea, and I'm going to watch that with my husband. So I think it's time for me to say goodbye. Um, I hope you liked the podcast. I will try to come back as often as possible. I'm also going to be doing another little vlogging of my other crafts that I'm doing. Um, I also am going to get back into jewelry making. I'm going to re-up my Etsy store, which is going to start having some jewelry. And I think I'm going to sew some pin pendants. And so guys, please follow Gemma Darling Designs on Etsy. Um, and I think I'm going to do a little vlog uh, every, maybe a couple every month called Gemma Darling Grows a Human. So I'm going to try not to flood your feed with baby crap, but if you are interested, you're welcome to watch the vlog, which will document this little one as she grows. And um, I'm very superstitious about pregnancy. I didn't really tell anyone I was pregnant with Franny until I was five or six months, which obviously you could tell I was pregnant. But I'm so nervous about something happening. And then it dawned on me for this pregnancy celebrate her while she's here and hopefully all will go well and if unfortunately it doesn't but we celebrated her while she was here so this is my little baby girl don't ask me what her name is i'm not going to tell you until she's born but she has a wonderful name and she's named after one of her great grandmothers who this is just going to make me cry because i loved my mima so very much and um family thing growing a baby thing it just makes you cry um Vanessa thank you for my pet preggy pop drops they made me feel so much better in my first trimester and I'm still popping them because they're delicious um and for everyone with the well wishes I can't even tell you like my heart is just ready to explode so everyone have a wonderful week I'll try to do this once a week but I don't think that's gonna happen <laughs> all right guys thanks again for stopping by I hope you liked what you saw and um just be well and be kind to one another. Thanks for checking in. Bye.